Well, hey, book lovers, welcome back to another episode of Young Adult Edition. We are so excited to be here because last week we had off. We missed you all. We were just talking behind the scenes that we really did miss you guys. We are so glad to see you today. We have our agent episode. We are going to be talking to an amazing lit agent all about the behind the scenes of what it's like to work with an agent in the book world. I am joined by my co-host, Ella Beaumont. Elle, how are you doing today? Great. I am so out of sorts because of the off week, and then I was camping the week before that. So <laughs> I know, we missed you. It's been so long since we've seen you. Uh, uh, hey, Connie, thanks for joining. We appreciate you being here. Um, but yeah, we definitely miss you, Elle, because you were busy, busy. Oh, yes. And how and are I'm you? Not, I'm good. I'm, it's been a crazy week for me, too. Like, so much is going on. Guys, we are going to be talking to a lit agent in just a few minutes. We're so excited. We've got some great questions for her today. Uh, but we do have a couple of things we want to go over with you guys first. So if you are joining us live, we want to hear from you. Jump into the comments and leave us your questions about anything agent related. We can't wait to hear from you. And if you're on our rebroadcast, we want to hear from you too. Jump into the comments. Leave us a little bit of love. And if you have a question that we did not cover here on air, we might just be able to get Krista back to answer your questions in a future episode, but we'll definitely be monitoring the comments as well. So we want to hear from you. Uh, thank you, Holly, for joining us. Welcome, Annie. Welcome, Amber. My button moved and I hit the wrong one. There we go. Got Holly up too. We're super excited to see all of you. So if you've got questions, we are going to be answering those in just a few minutes. But we have a couple of quick announcements here at Young Adult Edition. We're super excited for it. And the first thing we want to talk about is new book releases. So let me put this up on our screen so that you guys can see we've got a couple of new releases. And if you notice, we actually have not one, but two of my books up there because, surprise, I may or may not have surprise released two books last week. I'm really very excited about them. So if you guys have not checked out The Sinking and the Origins of the Siren War, make sure you do that because they're now available to you guys. So Elle, I know a lot of really cool stuff has been happening for you. I've got some uh, announcements of my own, but we want to point out that you have actually moved your candles. So you've got your bookish candles. They're not just online anymore. They are now in stores and exploding. Tell us just a little bit about that real quick. Okay, so one of my favorite local little holes in the wall is actually selling my candles. I brought it in as a gift and they were like, you need to sell your stuff here. So they're actually buying candles. Um, and I don't really want, uh, they're not going to see this anyway, but they're going to be selling my chapsticks um, and actually soaps too, as part of like a gift basket. Um, they're just awesome rock stars. And um, I'm really excited about that. And I just want to give like a quick shout out to my bookish line because I need to because I can. Um, so, <laughs> so this is actually part of your golden collection. This is Dove. I do make bookish candles. And then this is actually part of Alicia Gale's um, Fairy Trials collection. And I do make the bookish candles. And then I also make the author line, which is Cup of Muse. And they're actually really witty candles for authors or writers in general. <laughs> and if you guys have not seen our bookish candle episode of Young Adults Edition, make sure you do. We're talking about how authors can actually work with candle makers and how you can specifically work with Elle to create them for your book lines and how she goes about the process of creating the scents. Connie's in the comments saying, I love bookish candles. I'm kind of obsessed. And Jessica has joined us as well. Super excited to see you, lady. Thanks for joining. Now, a couple of quick other reminders before we jump in and talk to our agent today. I do want to let you guys know that we are going to be dropping some information about Mer Week next week or later this week, actually. So Mer Week is in October. It is surrounding the release of the box set of the first trilogy inside of the Siren War saga. And we are going to be celebrating by hanging out with professional mermaids and mermen. We've got a whole bunch of them coming and I'm letting you know exactly who is going to be hanging out with us and what bonus events, including making shell crowns and our birthday release party. We're going to be talking about that later this week with pictures of our incredible mermaids and mermen who are going to be joining us. We are also going to be uh, dropping some information on our upcoming anthologies for 2019. So if you are a YA author and you want to get involved in an anthology, we've got three of them 
for you to participate in next year. We're so excited for this. We picked our topics. They're amazing. You guys are not going to want to miss this. This is going to be announced next week, so we're incredibly excited, as well as information about the Villains Anthology, which comes out later this year. We cannot wait to get involved with that. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to have so much fun. And if you've been following my social media, you're also going to find out later this week that I was just asked to be a panelist at a major mermaid con speaking about mermaids in the media. So more information on that coming soon. But for now, we need to get jumping in to our question and answers with our lit agent. I am so excited. Uh, lots of love in the comments, guys. Yes, so much love in the comments. Thank you. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But we are going to be bringing on literary agent. Uh, and I'm going to move my screen over so that I can get everything up properly. There we go. I was looking for her name. We got it. All right. We're going to be hanging out with literary agent. Uh, nope. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I dropped my I dropped my notes. I'm having a day. It's a day. L. <laughs> it's a day. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good. It's fine. It's we fine. Talking, we were talking before. We're like, guys, oh, the weather's so miserable out and things are so messed up today. It is. <laughs> That's okay. Let us know. How's the weather where you are? Let us know where you are. <laughs> we're going to be hanging out with agent uh, Krista Heschke. And she is from Macintosh and Otis. She is going to be here answering our questions. So if you've got questions, if you've got comments, now is the time to let us know. We will be answering those in the course of today's episode. Krista, how are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks to Annie Sullivan, who I know is also watching, who connected us. Her book, A Touch of Gold, just came out. Oh, and hi, Ellie, another one of my clients. Hello. <laughs> Beautiful. We've got lots of fabulous people. Uh, and they are all sending you hearts, sending you love. Lots Aww. of excited people for today. And yes, special thanks to Annie for connecting us. We do appreciate that. Uh, speaking of which, guys, we're just going to do a little pitch. If you have someone who needs to be on this show, let us know. Tag them below and let us know who they are, why they need to be on the show. And we would love to get fabulous bookish people, authors, agents, anyone connected to the book world on Young Adult Edition. All right. So we are going to be chatting all about what it's like to be an agent. Krista, can you go ahead and give us a little bit of information about who you are? Yes, yeah. So I am a children's letter agent at Macintosh and Otis, where I have been my entire career, which is nine years so far. Um, and I do the full range of uh, children's books from horror books, picture books, middle grade, up through YA. And I do, um, I do both fiction and a little bit of nonfiction, but mostly fiction. And I have to say, I'm a genre girl, so I grew up reading a lot of fantasy, so like sci-fi, things like that, so I have a soft spot there. Um, but I feel like in general, yeah, you know, I really do it all. I do contemporary, I do more literary, I do um, darker stuff, like mysteries and thrillers, so I kind of cover all the bases there. That's amazing. So what made you want to get into agenting? I kind of fell into it, and I feel like this is kind of a common answer when I talk to my other publishing friends, um, where I always knew I loved to read. I was a big reader. I kind of dabbled in writing um, as well, but reading was always a big, a big thing that I loved. And when I was in college, one of my friends interned at Writer's House, and I was an English major. I didn't want to teach, um, so I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do at that point. He's like, you should try to intern at Writer's House, you know, see if you like that. And so I did, I loved it. I interned at Sterling Ward. So all my internship experiences were on the agency side and I just instantly fell in love. And then um, when I started working at Macintosh and Otis and Children's, it was just like, yes, this is the perfect fit. Like working with children's books, I'm definitely a big kid at heart. So it kind of worked out nicely there. <laughs> That's perfect, I love that. Um, so I wanna know, you've been at this for nine years now. What does it kind of look like behind the scenes of a typical day for you as an agent? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to say what a typical day is. Like, uh, Macintosh and Otis is more of a boutique agency, so we kind of do a little bit of everything. So a typical day will definitely be me checking my emails, which there's always a fair amount of. Um, but it could also be um, going over a contract, uh, negotiating a deal. Um, it could be working on different subreddits. So I also do translation rights, I do audio rights, I do book club, I do permission. Um, and we're an older agency too, so we have a quite a bit of backlist and estate clients. So I do some work there, I do some film TV stage. So I really do a little bit of everything. Um, also most days I'm at least on the phone a little bit. 
So yeah, emails, phones, and then like a variety of different things that can pop up at any time. That is amazing. Hey, listen, if you are joining us live, we want to hear from you. If you've got questions for Krista, now is the time. Hit us up in those comments below. Keep in mind, this is not the forum to be pitching, but we will give you information on how to do that at the end. So if you want to work with Krista, if you want to work with an agent, we're going to tell you how you can go about doing that. And we're going to talk a little bit about best practices for reaching out to an agent in just a few minutes. So if you've got questions, if you've got comments, let us know in the comments below. Um, we've got Ellie here with us who actually can't listen because she's at work. <laughs> She is here hanging out anyway. So Ellie, we appreciate you being here and we hope you will check out their replay so you can hear the audio as well. Uh, we are getting questions in the comments. So we will be checking that out. Lots of love. And uh, we're also chatting about that weather. So you guys are having some fun weather too. It's an awesome way of living life, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Elle, I know that sometimes I talk an awful lot as I as I dig into these comments that people are leaving for us, do you have a question? Do you have a specific genre that you specifically like just enjoy getting submissions and everything? Like you're just dying to get these? I cannot hear L. Oh, oh, oh dear. Okay. Or see her. <laughs> That's strange. I'm sorry. So she wanted to know. Do you have a specific genre that you are just dying to get your hands on? Is there something specific that you're looking for that you just really, really, really want to get as an agent? Yeah, um, actually, not so much a genre, but an age group. So I am, I have a fair amount of YA and a fair amount of picture books and not as much middle grade. So I'm really looking to expand in that area. And I feel like it's a nice sweet spot right now, too, where pretty much any editor who I work with is, is you know, looking for it. It's you know, it's continuing to grow and change in new ways over the last couple of years, which has been really fun and exciting. And like middle grade, I'm really so open. Um, I would say I tend to like a bit more literary, um, but I would do anything. I would do a mystery. I love a good ghost story in middle grade. I was a sucker for those growing up. Um, you know, a good coming of age story, a sister story, and a sister. We're really close. So I'd love to, you know, work either in middle grade or why it's something that really has a strong sister element to it. Um, yeah, really, really anything within middle grade. That's an area where I'm really, really open more than, you know, picture books where I'm pretty, um, where I'm taking those on very selectively right now and why I am still taking on, but yeah, middle grade is wide open. Well, that is good to know. We've got a lot of middle grades friends hanging out with wow. us. Uh, so we're, we might just send you some people. All right. Holly would like to know. At what point should a writer be seeking out a literary agent? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say, because it, it's kind of a fine line between over revising and maybe not revising enough. So I would say if you're not already, like definitely go to conferences like SCBWI or other conferences where you can link up with other authors who are writing the same genre, the same age group. Um, so you're getting other eyes from other authors. I think that's so, you know, so helpful. And even and authors I work with too, I'm like, get critique partners there. You know, you can't be having, you know, a few extra eyes, especially if you have a range of maybe but some are published and some who aren't. Um, but, you know, definitely get several reads at least on a draft, you know, before you're even thinking about sending it to an agent. Um, Cause it should be fairly polished, of course, though most agents, myself included, are pretty editorial too. Um, so, you know, we'll probably do at least a few rounds before going to editors, but it's just important, so much, so much more important, I'd say, over the last few years, let things be, you know, pretty polished before they go out. But um, yeah, I would just say don't submit too soon, so I wouldn't say, so definitely don't submit like a first draft or anything like that. Um, but also don't, you know, drive yourself crazy and revise and revise and revise and revise and be like, oh, it's not quite ready, it's not quite ready, you know? You know how writers can be perfectionists, which is totally fine. But you know, I guess it's more of a gut feeling too. It's like I've gotten a few reads, I feel pretty good about this. I might need a little bit more work, but I'm not sure where to go. So maybe you know that agent will help you kind of get it to the next, the next level, so it's ready to go out to editors. Fantastic. And that actually brings me to my next question. I want to know. Uh, what is the best way for people to actually reach out to agents? Is there anything that gets people noticed more? Uh, is there anything that you're looking for? Is there anything that turns you off? What should we be aware of when we're reaching out to agents? 
Yeah, I would say there's definitely a few different avenues you can go to meet agents and connect with them. Um, I mentioned SCBWI, which is Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, for those who don't know, um, or other um, conferences that have a children's chapter, because with those, I'm meeting authors face-to-face -face most of the time. Like, it could either be through a critique or a roundtable, um, or they usually have some kind of networking events there, so that's usually a good way to meet. And then when I see, I'm always open to submissions, um, and when people, I meet people at conferences, I make sure they put in the subject line, you know, hey, I met you at this conference, and then I'll look at it sooner than um, my regular queries, so that's one way. Um, I connect with a lot of people on Twitter. I'm pretty active there. I would say don't pitch to me on Twitter unless it's actually a pitch contest, you know, like pit man, pit dark, um, one of those, which is also another really good way to get noticed because I feel like a lot of agents participate in those. Um, and then, you know, of course, pitch words. Um, so all of those conferences on social media, um, contests, um, pitch contests, um, those are definitely a good way because there's a lot of agents we're looking for looking on that day. We'll, we usually look at those sooner. Um, and then, you know, regular queries too. I've definitely taken on, you know, plenty of clients from my regular queries. So, um, you know, we we definitely look through those carefully as well. So those are a couple ways. Um, and through my blog too, like I'll do kind of contests that I run every once in a while as well. Um, so those, I guess I would say are my top ways. Fantastic. And I love that you're so open to things too. You've got so many ways that people can reach out to you. Annie's in the comments and she wants to know how often do you read queries? Do you set aside an entire day? Do you read them on your own time? How does that work as an agent? Yeah, I do. Um, so I look through my queries and I also have interns and my lovely assistant, Danielle, who also looks through queries. Um, but I'm looking at anything that comes in. So it's not just like an intern or my sister will look at it and I never see it. Um, so usually every day, at least probably two or three times, I'm glancing through like what's coming in just that day. And that's just like quick looks. Like if there's something that really jumps out to me that has a cool title or in a genre that I'm really looking for, um, I might look at that sooner. And I think I have a post from a while back about subject lines in, in um, email queries and how helpful they can be versus just saying, you know, query, you know, I'm not going to look at that probably. So I'm like, I know it's a query. <laughs> so being specific there, I think is helpful. But yeah, I mean, I look at least a few times a day and then the more thorough looks, um, probably a couple times a week where I'm kind of looking through the stuff I need to take a closer look at to see if I want to request more pages um, or if it's a pass for me. So pretty often. <laughs> okay. So I have to ask then, just because I know we're all dying to know this, just ballpark this for me how many queries do you get maybe per week or per month just kind of give us an idea of what we're looking at for competition um it, it varies like there's certain times where i get a lot more than others like especially if there's some kind of you know twitter pitch thing going on or where i just went to a conference so it could be anywhere from i would say 20 a day to probably 50 a day and that's just one day I mean, every once in a while, it'll be a little slower, like it was a holiday, and I might only get like five to ten, but that's rare too. Like, it's a funny day, so a lot. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my God. That's, that's okay. Good. I like going through them. <laughs> that's good, as long as you like going through them, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, finding, you know, finding some some great things and what people are thinking about, and also like how. You know, you'll see trends also in queries too. Like all of a sudden, I'm getting a lot of YA fantasy, or I'm getting a lot of sci-fi. So it's kind of cool to see what people are working on. Fantastic. Uh, Connie is in the comments, and she says, "With YA, is it easier for you to sell a trilogy than a standalone manuscript?" I would say no. Um, I mean, there's always exceptions when you see those monster deals um, for YA. It's usually some kind of trilogy or duology. Um, but I would say that's kind of the exception. Um, I would say that normal day-to-day -day sales would be uh, usually a standalone first, um, and then the publisher often will want to see how that does, and if it does well, they might add books to the, you know, add books on later, um, and if it doesn't, they might not. So I just say, I just say that it's always important if you have a series in mind that the first book has that it can stand alone as well. Um, and also I say when you query too, don't say this is like an eight book series or something like that. That might, you know, scare some people away. So 
I'm just saying, you know, this is a book that can stand alone but has serious potential. That doesn't mean you have to immediately wrap up the ending with a bow or anything. You can leave some things dangling. Um, but yeah, I would definitely suggest that. Um, in trilogy series, I think, especially lately, you definitely see them popping up, but in general, it can be a little trickier. Um, just because I think publishers are thinking more about, you know, where they're putting their money, what they're buying, like, you know, and how the market's been doing in that area. So there's a lot of factors that go into that. <laughs> we are getting so much love in the comments. We've got so many questions, guys. We're going to get to everything. And if you've got questions, if you've got comments, hit us up real fast. We will get as many things answered as possible, but we do have some limited time today. So give us your best questions, but we also will be hitting up those comments as well later on. We're going to try to get to everything. And if you are finding this helpful, if you think this is an amazing resource for you, what we want you to do is jump down and hit that share button. That tells Facebook that we are doing something good, that we are giving great information out, and they should be sharing this with more fabulous people just like you. When you share and Facebook gives it to more people and we bring more people in to hang out with us, we can bring on even more fabulous people just like Krista to answer your questions, especially because we are expanding what we're doing here with our agent friends and getting more of your questions answered. So we wanna hear from you, leave your questions below, but hit that share button and let your friends know that they should come join us as well. All right, so taking a look at these fabulous questions, J.M. Sullivan would love to know, what makes a query stand out to you? That's a tricky one. Um, part, partially, it would be, you know, if it's an area I'm in particular looking for, which I mentioned middle grade, so that immediately would jump out to me because I'm really looking in that area, or any genres that I'm big fans of, like I mentioned, like mysteries, fantasy, like sci-fi, those usually jump out to me, or darker contemporary I'm a big lover of. Um, and then, you know, that pitch, you know, that, that one, two liner that, you know, agents that we're able to talk about and editors talk about too, um, that's what usually will really grab me. So I would suggest that you put that early on in your query, you know, what's going to hook me. Um, if you have any comp titles, like that would help me kind of visualize what kind of project that is. A lot of times that stands out to me and something that I feel is unique that, you know, maybe I haven't quite seen done before. It could be, uh, you know, an interesting character. It could be, like, kind of genre bending. So something that shows me that you're not afraid to go outside the box really will stand out to me in a very Fantastic. Amber is in the comments, and she would like to know, in your opinion, is the trend of retellings on its way out, or is it still staying strong? I think um, fantasy in general is getting pretty saturated, but I don't, I think that the readers still want more which is great, including retellings. Um, so I think on my end, it's a little trickier to sell um, fantasy at the moment, um, but I don't think that they're going out yet. I think they're still staying strong. And Annie, Annie, who I think is still here, she writes retelling. So yeah, I think it's, it's definitely something readers are, are still eagerly looking for. So yeah. We're big fans of retellings around here. I may or may not be of retellings, <laughs> Uh, but we've got a ton of friends who write retellings as well, so we may just kind of send them your way as well. Oh, feel free. I love a good retelling. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Amber would also like to know, what's the most common mistake that you see in queries? One of the most common ones is addressing it to the wrong person um, or just saying dear agent or even I get dear editor sometimes. <laughs> so totally the wrong side of the process. Um, or submitting something to me that, for instance, I don't do any adult at all, so I occasionally get adult queries, so I'm not even going to look at that. Um, or if it's in a genre I'm not working in at all at the moment, I won't look at it. Because um, I, I, I make sure to be pretty clear on what I'm looking for and what I'm not at a given time. You know, get on my blog, or you can see website, or on Twitter. Um, so those are probably the biggest things. And then I would say, um, remember that it's a business letter too. So I've gotten some that are really personal. And I do like to get um, a sense of who the author is and you know why they're bringing me and all that. But it's kind of a fine line between oversharing. So that's another thing I would keep in mind. Um, or having something with a really ridiculous break count when I see like a, an 120,000 YA contemporary that might throw me off a little bit. So those are a few things. That's actually a great question that I should be asking you. As you are looking at queries, what is your word count that you're kind of aiming for? 
Yeah. And I mean, I'm not like a stickler when it comes to word count either, because that's something if I really like the premise and the story, I'm not afraid to work on some cutting. Um, that's usually like as far as revisions go, one of the easier things to kind of hash out. But um, I would say like middle grade is usually 35 ish. You know, it can go a little lower if it's um, 35 to 50, I would say. If it's lower middle grade, it can even go a little bit lower than that. Um, and fantasy and genre stuff might even go, will go above 50K. So it's like, you know, it's kind of um, a, a feel for it. And then, so if I'm seeing like a 90K middle grade, I mean, that's a little long. Um, YA is usually 50 to 70, but again, that's more like contemporary. So again, like fantasy could go to 90, it could even go to 100. Um, but I think just the most important thing is just kind of being aware of it. And just when you're revising and going to critique partners and things like that, thinking about, you know, your different plot lines and your, your different scenes and what's needed, what drives the story, what doesn't when it comes to word count. But I, I don't think most agents obsess about that so much as long as it's not like, you know, 150,000 words or anything like that. Like, it's like two books in one, basically. But it, I think it's something to be mindful of. For sure. We are getting lots of comments from fabulous people who are super excited. They would love for you to mentor them. They are thanking you for your advice. Uh, they are jumping in to mention that they love the idea of having a mentor. So lots of love for getting a mentor as you are working on this. Uh, Annie is here saying that she hopes that the retailing market is still strong. We <laughs> hope so too. We hope so too, yeah, Annie. <laughs> Uh, Holly is in the comments and she would like to know what should we look for in agent? So what are those good qualities that a reader or a writer actually should be looking for? Yeah, that's a great question too. I mean, definitely what is important for a writer to look for in an agent will vary a little bit between authors. You know, um, you know, some want someone who might be more of a bigger name and you know, might have more sales under their belts and New York Times bestsellers and like kind of that prestige. You know, some people might want someone who's just starting out and might have more time to kind of develop their, their work and work more closely with them. Um, but in general, I think you're going to want to look for someone who, like, when you have that phone call, like, when they call you and they're going to offer your representation. Because um, it's important to you not to just be like, oh, yes, I have an, an offer. I'm going to accept it to also think if that agent is the right fit for you. So things like what's their communication style? Um, are they email only? Do they do phone calls? Do they do a little bit of both? Are they going to be communicating with you fairly frequently? Are they going to disappear for a couple months and you're going to hear from them? Um, so, and you know, of course, do your interests align? Like, do they work on this kind of stuff that you're working on? Um, and if you write, say, different genres or different age groups, which a lot of my authors do, does that agent do that? Or do they kind of look to work with only someone who works in one genre or one age group? Um, like, are they members of the AAR, which is the Association of Authors Representatives, um, that they have a canon of ethics that they have to uphold, so that's important to some authors. Um, let's see, what else? Um, what's their submission style like? Do they kind of submit to every, every editor they know in the first round and kind of hope something sticks, or do they do more of a round by round and give you time to, you know, revise if all the editors in the first round pass? Um, and how in the loop do they keep you? So do they send you all the passes, um, all the interest emails from editors? Um, are they are they letting you know what exactly is going on, even if it's quiet? And they you know, check in with you and say, hey, you know, I'm still here. We're just waiting for some responses. Um, so th those are some of the things I would say that are important. Definitely also just being able to, you know, feel comfortable talking to them as well. Um, is, is important to you because hopefully it's going to be a long lasting relationship from book to book. Oh, and that's another thing too, some agents do only do a book by book basis. Well, it's not very common anymore. Most agents kind of look to work with someone throughout their career, but that's another important thing to, to keep in mind as well. Fantastic. Uh, I do see a quick question I want to address and we're going to let Chris address this as well. Uh, Holly wants to know what are some upfront costs for writers during the process of getting your book out there? So Krista, do you want to handle that? And then I'll probably jump in with some comments too. Sure. Um, I'm, I, I mean, it really depends. Like I know some writers before they start querying might hire 
like a freelance editor to go over their book, kind of copy edit, things like that. And the cost for that can really vary. And I'm not, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you really think it's necessary. I would try to go the critique partner, you know, route. Um, so it really could be zero dollars and it could be a few thousand, like depending if you go that route. Other than that, I, also if you're doing conferences and if you're meeting agents that way, um, there is some cost there, but again, it's what you're comfortable with, what you can afford. You don't have to go there for us. You can totally get to an agent and find an agent and not spend any money. So it kind of depends what you're, what you're looking to do there. And I just want to jump in here. There are a number of resources that we have on Reading Transforms and here on my author platform as well on this topic. Um, we have talked with other professionals about this as well. So if you are going with a traditional publisher, that should not cost you anything aside from doing things like conferences and things like that. If you're self-publishing, there are definitely some costs that come along with this. And we have information on how to work with an editor, how to work with a cover designer, how to get your book out there and formatted and all that lovely stuff. Um, but also please be aware that there are things like vanity presses that make you pay for a lot of stuff and you should not be working with them. We're just gonna, that's a blanket statement here for Young Adult Edition and for Reading Transforms and for uh, me as an author. So if you need information on that, if you've got questions, if you've got comments, hit me up in the DMs after the show and I will give you everything I've got on that. All right, so we are moving on. Uh, Elle, do you have any questions? I will translate for you, uh, but what do you have for us? Gee, I don't know. I have to say that I can't see Krista anymore. Um, about a couple minutes ago, I can't even hear her responses. Her screen is black. So <laughs> I'm assuming we can't see or hear each other. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Krista, I'm translating here. I uh, okay. can no longer see or hear you. So we're, I guess, I some technical glitches. Yeah. So I don't even know if she answered any questions. <laughs> I does not know what questions that you have answered, so she does not have any questions to offer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll jump back to me. That's okay. I'll spearhead all of this. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it's <laughs> no, it's not your fault. There's some kind of glitch going on. Yay, Facebook. Sometimes yeah. it happens, guys. This is the beauty of live television. So if you're joining us live and you can hear and see us, we would love to know what questions you have. We are going to be wrapping this up. We have, we're going to take maybe one or two more questions if you have them. And we are going to be wrapping up for today. But stick around because we have some big, huge details at the end of the show you do not want to miss today. All right. So, Christo, today we have talked all about um, how life works as an agent. We've talked about the behind the scenes. We've talked about how to contact you. We've talked about what people are looking for when they're reading these queries and what people should be looking for in agents. We've got a couple of last minute questions coming in. We're going to get those answered. And then we're going to ask all about how people can find you. So Jessica would like to know what type of YA genres do you think or see will be the next big fad? That is hard to say. And also I would just say in general, as a writer, don't write for trends. Um, Cause usually by the time you see something breaking out as a fad or a trend, it's already too late. Um, because just think about a traditional publishing schedule Once something is bought, it might not come out for a year or 18 months. Um, so, I mean, I, I've seen fantasy is still definitely going strong. Um, we thought for a, a, for a while that sci-fi might break out more than it did, and it didn't really. So there's nothing in particular that I would say. I mean, a lot of agents and editors, I wouldn't call it a fad, because I mean, this needs to continue in publishing in general, but there's definitely been a big call um, for own voices and diverse books, which is so important. But again, not a fad, it's just something that finally we're, you know, we're, we're addressing the need there, at least starting to. Um, but genre-wise, I mean, there's really nothing at the moment. I'm sorry, I don't have a more particular answer there. Um, but, you know, to keep it short, I would just say, you know, write what speaks to you. You know, get those characters on the page that, you know, you're you're having dreams about, or you're talking to you, or at the grocery store, or whatever, and don't worry so much about, you know, fads and trends. But, of course, it is important to know what isn't working. So dystopia is still pretty tough, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, paranormal still really isn't selling yet, but in publishing things come around. So keep that in mind too. So you can, you can put that on the shelf for a while. If that is something that you've written and it usually will come back around. Fantastic. Uh, Amber would like to know, what is your favorite part of being an agent? Oh, that's so hard. There's so many favorite parts. Um, 
definitely one of one of my favorite parts is just you know connecting with a project and getting that feeling you know when you're reading you're like oh my gosh i have to work with this author or, you know i have to do this um and then a lot of times when i'm reading something and i start thinking that way i start thinking of editors too while i'm reading it i'm like that's when i really know that i've, I've fallen in the manuscript and that initial find is always a lot of fun that's a good part. that's a fun part of being an agent also, of course, making that um, you know deal call to an author for the first time, or, or any time really being like, hey, I sold your book. Um, that's always a highlight, and I really like working on translation right too. I think that's a fun part. So you know, after the book sells in the U.S., kind of selling it in different languages and seeing those new editions come in, and you know, getting that book out around the world is is another favorite thing of mine. And I really like to network too. So. You know, just meeting people at conferences. I love to do that, and meeting with editors is a big part of my job too. And I really enjoy that. So I could probably go on and on, but those are some things that I really like about being a teacher. That's fantastic. Hey, question: How long after submission should a person kind of, you know, kind of wait to res or to get a response from you? Does it take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, like in general for you and then in general for the industry as well. Oh gosh, I wish I could respond to everything in a few days or even a, a week or so. Um, it depends on the season a little bit and every agent I would say has a little, their response time might vary a little bit, but I would say like six to eight weeks is pretty common. You know, some agents might take four weeks and might go up to 12, um, but that's also kind of a loose deadline too. Um, sometimes it takes more. So, for instance, fall usually is a really busy time for submission. So, it might take me a little bit longer to get stuff then than other times of the year or holiday time, you know, things like that. Or spring, there's a lot of conferences and international fairs, Bologna, PEA, and all those things. So, I feel like those times of year, um, so, you know, response time might be a little bit slower. Um, but for unsolicited queries, unfortunately, um, I can't respond to all of them, but I do respond to anything I've requested, anything from a conference. Um, those are all, you know, within my response window. But I would say for me, if you don't hear from me within six to eight weeks, then um, consider it a pass. And I think that's, I think the six to eight weeks is pretty standard across across the board with agents. Beautiful, Annie Sullivan. We have to give her a shout out. Fun fact: you missed your agent's call. <laughs> about your book deal because you were in a basement fighting a spider um is that more perfectly annie than i mean <laughs> I, I just feel like that's so perfect for you uh, so what tell me what happened krista if she gets your call did you leave a voicemail did you call her back how did that work i think i left if i remember Krista. i think i left her a voicemail and then i probably also sent her an email um but also another fun fact is that when I called her to off initially offer her representation, she was in, in Antarctica, so I got her sister. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, usually if I don't if I don't get a client, you know, right away, I'll just be like, hey, I got some exciting news to share, <laughs> and I'll you know leave a voicemail. But <laughs> that's awesome. I also feel like Annie has such a glamorous life. <laughs> <laughs> so is traveling. <laughs> Oh goodness. Um, let's see. Is there a point when an agent is going to give up on selling a book? Connie would like to know. Yeah, um, that's a good question too. I mean, every agent probably would be a little bit different as far as how wide of a submission they might do before they decide. You know, hey, I don't think this book is going to be the one. Um, and that's really okay. That happens sometimes with the second book or third book. You know, it depends. Um, so you also want to find an agent who is, you know, willing to stick with you. They have a lot of faith in you. They love you. They're gonna push your push your work. Um, so I would say for me personally, it really depends on the project. But I've had books that I've probably submitted to like 40, 30, 40 different editors, and they have sold. Um, and you know, some sell a lot quicker than that. So. I think I'm a little stubborn and I don't want to give up on projects, especially when I really love it. But I would say at least, I would say at least 30 plus is probably pretty common. And that's like a range of different, you know, imprints at different size houses from the big five to mid size and maybe some uh, smaller indies too if the author is open to that. Um, so, yeah. 
fantastic. You have answered so many questions today. We are at the end of our time, guys. But if you have more questions, we will be monitoring those comments and we will get you as many answers as possible. So hit us up in those comments below, whether you are live with us right now or on our replay. But we are so excited to be in the world of an agent. Kristen, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We appreciate all of your help and your guidance and your advice. And before we go, we do want to let everybody know where they can find you. But first, how should they be clearing you if they feel like you are the perfect fit for them? And I feel like if they've been on this eighth episode, they know you're the perfect fit for them. So <laughs> how do they reach out to you in terms of submitting a query? Yeah, thanks so much again for having me. And to query me, um, if you go to my agency's website, which is macintoshandotis.com slash agents, you'll see my little blurb there. Um, and it'll include my query email and what exactly to send. So it's chquery at macintoshandotis.com. And it's first 25 pages. Um, synopsis and query and um, also I have more info about what I'm looking for um, you know kind of favorite books you can kind of narrow down you know what, I'm, what I really like and kind of what grabs me on my blog as well which is kristaheshke.blogspot.com and I have some res fun resources for authors there as well too um, so those are those are the ways um, that I go about finding more about me and um, you know querying me then on yeah. Twitter, I'm always doing MSWLs and things like that. So about what I'm looking forward to. And you are very, very big on Twitter. You're very active. You're always involved in the pitching contests. So on that note, tell us where they can find you on social media and on your website. Yeah, yeah. Twitter is at Krista Hushke, so just my name, very simple. Um, and yes, I try to be very active there. And I, keep, and I do try to answer questions um, on there as well when I get them. But yeah, that's that and my blog. Um, and I'm also on Instagram, but I'm not as active there. So I'd say probably follow me on Twitter as your best bet. Oh, hang out with me, lady. We're going to get you full blast on Instagram. I'm such a big fan of Instagram for marketing. So, you know, we're just going to be friends after this. It's all good. <laughs> we'll get her on Instagram. First. But make sure you follow <laughs> up her blog as well. We do have the link on the screen so you guys can go check that out. And we will be posting links in the blog post on my author blog when we put this up over there as well. Now, if you've got questions, if you've got comments, we still want to hear from you. Jump down to those comments and you are getting so much love right now. People are so thrilled that you've been here today and we are thrilled <laughs> all up on the screen right now. My gosh, so many comments, <laughs> but we are thrilled to have had you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Krista. Thank um, you, yeah. Krista, even though you can't hear me. <laughs> Ellis also said to thank you for being here, even though you cannot. Oh, thank you. I wish I could have seen you. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, and Krista, we look forward to having you back in the future. We'll chat with you in the yeah, green room in just a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We want to give you just a couple of quick reminders and major information about big, 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 big things coming here for Young Adult Edition and for my author platform as well. Now, if you have somebody who should be on our show, an author, an agent, someone related to the book industry in any way, shape, or form, let us know in the comments below. Tag them because we want to get as many fabulous people on as possible. And just a little side note, we've got some incredible authors and book world people coming on in the next couple of weeks and major big name, like you've seen them in every single store. They are super, super well known coming this Ball. I can't wait. It's going to be so excited, but it's also a surprise. So I can't tell you, but I haven't dropping hints like left and right. I've been dropping hints. If you figured out who it is, DM me. I'll confirm in DM, but don't comment. <laughs> we can't wait. We're so excited for this. And of course, you can join us every 10 a.m. on Mondays right here on Facebook.com slash KM Robinson Books for more Young Adult Edition. Next week, we are going to be talking with best-selling author Sarah K.L. Wilson about episodic fiction. So we have already had her here on Young Adult Edition for our fantasy episode, and I recently did an author interview with her. If you want to check that out, make sure that you jump over to blog.kmrobinsonbooks.com or hit up the videos right here on Facebook, and you can watch her episode to learn a little bit about her series before she comes on and tells us how she created this epic phenomenon of episodic fiction that has been hitting the charts at number one again and again and again. We can't wait to have her here next Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and Elle, let everybody know where they can find you before we sign off. 
You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Elbow Mom Books and my website, which is elbowmombooks.com. And you can also find me on YouTube where you can watch some rebroadcasts of my lives and unboxings. Yes, for sure. Uh, and you can come hang out with me at kmrobinsonbooks.com. We just done our website makeover. Super fun. Our world portals are opening back up in the next couple of weeks because those are going under a major makeover, brand new information. There's going to be new interactive choose your own adventure games. There's going to be more videos. There's going to be more artwork. It's amazing. It's so good. And I cannot wait to debut the world portals, but you can get a taste of what you're going to see over on the brand new website right now. And of course you can hang out with me at Cam Robinson Books on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Also check out my YouTube channel for more rebroadcasts of the Young Adult Edition and all of my author interviews, my shows, unboxings, events, book birthdays, all those fun, fabulous things and answering your questions through video. And of course you can hit up the IGTV channel for exclusive content over there as well. We cannot wait for you to join us next week, uh, but we do have information later this week coming about Mer Week. I told you we have some incredible professional mermaids and mermen coming to join us. We are going to be making shell crowns together live on air. It's a craft time. It's going to be amazing. We've got a book birthday party. So, so, so many things happening. We've already confirmed six different mermaids and an entire mermaid pod coming to join us for the week. And we have a couple others we haven't gotten on the books yet, but it's going to be a major week full of really amazing mermaids and mermen. Uh, and of course, later this next week, next week, we are going to be dropping information on our 2019 anthologies. We want you guys to come hang out with us. I know I saw some comments on that below. Uh, so join us next week as we announce those amazing topics. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to have a great time. These are incredible topics. And we will be dropping information about the Twisted Villain Anthology, which comes out very, very soon. We're going to be dropping some incredible information about that as well in the coming days. We cannot wait. Uh, Annie Sullivan, shout out for the mermaid crowns. Yeah, we are making shell crowns. Come join me, boo. It's going to be so much fun. You can actually come on because I know you've got mermaids in your book too. So you can be a guest star if you want to come pop on and hang out. We can make mermaid shells as well. Uh, lots of love for the mermaids. Yay. Fantastic. Guys, we're going to see you all next week. We cannot wait for you to join us for our next episode with Sarah K. L. Wilson, all about episodic fiction. And if you want to be on the show, let us know. We can't wait to have you. Until then, you guys have a great day and stay inspired. Bye-bye.